Um, all right, uh, Michael, second question. Our culture is so evil. <laughs> You're in a good mood today, Michael. <laughs> Our culture is so evil. They'll make fun of anyone for any reason so long as they take something, as long as they take something seriously. They're, they're targeting people looking for meaning in life. Those are the people they want to destroy. That fact discourages many young, exciting, excited objectivists. I agree. I agree completely. It's one of the reasons people ask me, Yaron, why do you hate The Simpsons? Because I really do hate The Simpsons. And why do you hate, what was that other cartoon that's really funny that uh, somebody- Family knew? Guy. What's that? Not, no, Family Guy, I wouldn't even South watch. Park. No, the one by, written by the couple of libertarian types. South Park. South Park, thank you, South Park. I don't like South Park. Now, I like certain episodes. They're so funny. How can you not? But I don't like South Park because the whole point of South Park is to make fun of pretty much everything. Now, I know aficionados of South Park tell me that, yes, there is some values that they actually do stand by and represent. Maybe. But I would say that the dominant sense that we have gotten from South Park, Simpsons, probably uh, the show that Jonathan mentioned, um, and, and much of the culture generally, much of our comedy, and much, of our, uh, much of our other movies, the anti-hero movies, or the, 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 is a culture of cynicism and skepticism. A culture that you're absolutely right makes fun of anybody who takes ideas seriously, who wants to knock down idealism, no matter what the ideals are, that wants to betray them, stab them in the back, make fun of them, destroy them in one way or another. And you see that over and over and over again in popular culture. And I find that really despicable. And now some ideas are worth knocking down, but if all you do is knock down, then you're sending a certain message, particularly young people who watch this stuff incessantly. This is all they watch, right? Because it's funny and it's entertaining. And some of it is true in a sense that you're knocking down stuff that's true, good to knock down. But if you're not presenting anything positive, then what stays with that young person? The knocking down and, and the, the evil of idealism, the evil of, of, of ability, the evil of success. When Josh Hawley says, break big tech up, break them up with a viciousness in the name of the people, it's just ugly nihilism spewing out, right? Now, he has an agenda. He's doing this in the name of an ideal. But that's a scary ideal. But young people are going, yes, we've always wanted to smash stuff, right? That's what we were taught, to be cynical, skeptical of success, be cynical, skepticism of ideals. Now, So that is the kind of nihilism that I think has infiltrated even better people. Even better people have that cynicism in them. And cynicism is a great evil. It's a great, great, great evil. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it, it, it is sad. And you see it all over the place. You see it all over the place. And that's, and that's the real enemy. It's, it's much bigger than... The socialists, because I think a lot of people on the left make fun of the socialists because the socialists actually believe in something. They've got an ideal. Huh, that's kind of funny. A universal ideal. I mean, these people make, I mean, the, the, the far left, in the sense that they're pure cynicism, skepticism, pure nihilism, make socialists look like the good guys. So yes, it, we live... I've often said this, we live in the best of times materially from an opportunities perspective, from a self-actualization perspective, and the worst of times from a cultural perspective. The only way to live a good life is, is to be self-contained in a sense. Seek out the better shows. This is why I think I mentioned there were a couple of TV shows recently that I were shocked by the lack of cynicism. Um, Ted Lasso, was it Lasso? I think it was Ted Lasso, something like that, on, on Apple TV, which is about this American football coach who goes to 
uh, England and uh, coaches soccer. And it's a, it's a comedy. And, and you think that it's just going to make fun of this guy and it's just going to make him look ridiculous. And it's just going to make fun of Americans and it's going to put down American. It's going to, and it doesn't, it, 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 it he, he's funny. And some of his stuff is ridiculous, but it's not made fun. It's not undermining him. He's actually a kind of heroic character. He's kind of cool. And America's portrayed as a good place, not a bad place. And the same with another show about this marketing executive who goes to Paris. And it makes fun of the Parisian sense of skepticism and cynicism. It's like, who are these people in Hollywood who greenlit these projects, who wrote the script, where there's an idealism there? It's, you know, it's not objectivist. It's not great. But it's... It's like America is a cool place. Individualism is good. And having your own ideas and having a different way of doing things is a good thing. And these Europeans are kind of stuck up, cynical bastards. Wow. I mean, that Emily in Paris. Thank you. Emily in Paris and Ted Lasso. And it's like, who, who made these shows? It's like shocking. You know, so once in a while, you see, or, or I don't know if you saw Mr. Jones, the, the movie. Uh, anti-communist movie, right? Made by a Polish director, granted not by an American one. But uh, I'm always struck and and uh, and and positive when I see art and and uh, movies and TV shows shows that are not cynical, because I think that is a good cultural sign, a, a really really good cultural sign. But it's it it goes against the current grain, and but it, it's little. Little signs like that that suggest maybe, maybe, maybe we're having an impact. Maybe there's some early signs that things can get better, that the culture might have changed. Remember, the culture will change in, in some ways decades before the politics changes. Or the early signs of cultural change will happen way before the politics changes. So... Somebody asked if my favorite comedian is Borat. I hate Borat. The whole premise of Borat's humor is to make people look ridiculous. And you can make everybody, anybody look ridiculous. You think you would stand up to a well-crafted Borat? It easily make you look ridiculous in some capacity. But that's the whole point. It's not to elevate anything. It's not to improve anything. And it's not to make ridiculous just vice. It's to make everybody and anybody ridiculous. Now, the piece in Giuliani, I have to admit, I enjoyed because I hate the guy so much that if you want to make anybody look ridiculous, you want to make Giuliani look ridiculous, I will cheer. But yeah, not, not my, I, I mean, um, they're trying to figure out who my, my, favorite, um, my favorite comedian is. Good question. I like Chaplin. I, I didn't like, I, I didn't like Lauren and Hardy too stupid in a sense um i like the marx brothers i didn't like um what do you call the other guys uh what do you call the uh the, the guys who hit, the, hit each other in the head the three off. stooges three stooges never liked the three stooges that's like more like lon and hardy but i liked the, the marx brothers um and then I, I i liked uh i liked humor from about 20 years and previous i i like i like uh, british humor I, I liked um, uh, I liked Faulty Towers is one of my favorite favorite shows ever. Faulty Towers. I liked uh, um, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of those a, a lot of that period's British TV shows comedy. But I hate I hate American humor from the last I don't know thirty years. Ever since the turning point in American humor for me was Dumb and Dumber. And since then, it's only gotten dumb and dumber. So uh, that is, uh, that is uh, how bad it is. Oh, wait. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence. 
and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share, and uh, you can support the show at youronbookshow.com slash support, or on Patreon, or Subscribestar, or Locals, uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value, hopefully, you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if you... Even if you just come here to troll, or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe, because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified. Right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.